Well, I'm joined now by the former head of the Royal Navy, Admiral Lord West. It's a pleasure to have you on the programme tonight, Lord West. Thank we you. were just talking. You were uh, deputy chair of the JIC, the Joint Intelligence Committee, once in your previous role. Yeah. So you'll know exactly what they've been up to today. Do you agree with the evidence that it is highly likely Assad was behind last week's chemical attack? I mean, it's written in what we used to call jig speak because it's written in that particular way. And I think I would accept that it is highly likely he did it. But I believe the British population need more convincing than that um, because they are so scarred with Iraq and they want to see some of the hard intelligence. And it's interesting in the States, some of the Americans are beginning to question some of the hard intelligence. And I think in, certainly in the House of Lords today, a number of the peers were questioning that. And I think they need to find some of the, they talked about these nuggets, mm -hmm. which are too sensitive. I think this is so important, they might have to break those out. And, and you are right. We've had lots and lots of texts and emails about this on that very subject. Patrick Bryan says, the Prime Minister must clearly define to the public what would be the short, long-term objectives achieved by military action. But, but can they release intelligence? Cause, because you, they're very secretive of what they can and can't say. Well, when I was they? Chief of Defence Intelligence, I'd have said, no, I don't want to do this. But this is such an important decision that politicians can always tell um, an apparatchik like a Chief of Defence Intelligence to do something. And they can say, look, I want you to do that. And I think this is a case where we need to convince our population, and I think possibly for a debate with the Russians, and to show why we're absolutely certain they're doing it, rather than what is quite loosely worded. If you read the whole document, right. it doesn't make you think at the end, wow, this is absolutely, I mean, I believe it, but it doesn't make you feel that. But would it be enough, even if they had 100% guaranteed evidence that Assad was behind last week's chemical attacks, would it be enough to convince the British public we're right to launch a military strike of some I think sort? If, if that was in place, if we tried to get the Russians to change their view because of this intelligence was so sure, if we could then get a Security Council resolution saying, yes, you should do something, if we showed we tried every other option, maybe some other types of resolution, so there's lots of I think and then, buzz. absolutely, I think then people would say, well, we need to show him that he cannot go on using chemical weapons against his right. own population. Would it work? Because that's the that other is question, a isn't issue, it? Which I'm very worried about. So why do you not, why do you not think um, tailored <clears throat> missile strikes, which President Obama has been talking about, um, would not send a, a, a warning sign across the bow to President Assad not to use these chemicals again? Well, I think if he's sort of deranged enough to actually use chemical weapons against his own population in this sort of horrible, grotesque way, when there was a red line that Obama had talked about, one feels that he's not really going to sit back and take a little bit of punishment, rather like a schoolboy, and then do nothing. I mean, I just can't see that happening. So I the, can't see it. And so your concern is what, mission, mission creep once well, we're in? I think, then the, the, yes, it, 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 you can call it mission creep, you can call it unintended consequences. That's my worry. I mean, I don't know what this attack's going to be. Uh, David Cameron said, I think he quoted, he was going to, they wanted to degrade the ability to use the weapons, possibly by attacking their command and control. Actually, as a military man, I can tell you, if you degrade command and control, it's more likely that the weapons will be used in a very okay. dis indiscriminate but way. But as a military man, are you happy to sit by and do nothing? Because that's the alternative. No, that goes back to my point. Having gone through all those various things, I said we may have to do something. Then we've got to think through what are in the ultimate interests of our nation? What exactly are we trying to achieve? And I, and I think until we've done all that, we can't say should okay. we or shouldn't we. And I, I'm not at the moment convinced that any military action of the type talked about actually will achieve And anything. just briefly, I have to push you, I'm afraid, but there is a feeling something might happen this weekend by the United States. Would you agree with that or not? Well, certainly, on, when I came back on Tuesday, it was quite clear that events were moving so quickly, we would have been in operations on Sunday. Has that now, changed? Now, that has, that has changed as far as the UK goes, thank goodness. I think, uh, you know, I think that, that sanity has actually crept into our decision-making. I hope that Obama won't allow that to happen. He, he actually wanted to do this less than the others. The French and the British, we were pushing him. Okay. But I, he's in a difficult place because people think he's pusillanimous, had given his red line, hasn't done it. Politically, back at home, he's under a lot of pressure. We have to leave it there. Lord West, thank you very much for your thoughts okay. today.